cataractcoach.com. All of these are aligned at 120 degrees. So how do you choose where to orient your toric IOL? It's a great question. So we're making marks here at the 120 degree meridian. Now, we're confirming this with an interoperative guidance system, which you're not seeing here uh, on the microscope view. We're going to make the paracentesis there at that steep meridian. And then now we're going to fill the eye with our viscoelastic and our anesthetic and go from there. And we'll make our main incision as well. Now, we know we want to make the main incision ideally on the steep axis, but if not, we can make it on the flat axis as well. And the flat axis is appropriate, though it will slightly increase the total amount of astigmatism. We will not shift the meridian of the astigmatism. So now this incision is being made at 30 degrees, so that's on the flat axis. And that's going to increase the total astigmatism by about 0.3 diopters. We'll incorporate that change into the torque lens power. And so we'll still achieve our desired outcome. Here comes the eye while going in the capsule bag. Now, how do you orient the lens? I showed you at the beginning those parallel lines were all at the 120 degree mark. And what we want to do is we want to ensure that the center of this lens is going to be exactly in the patient's central visual axis. And a good way of helping line that up is using these Purkinje images in the center of the IOL. So let's first remove our viscoelastic. Very important in a toric lens that you have to remove all the viscoelastic from behind the optic. If you leave viscoelastic back there, it acts as a lubricant and it can allow the IOL to shift or spin or rotate out of position. So in order to keep the lens in good position, you definitely have to remove all that viscoelastic. So let's remove the viscoelastic. We'll use our chopper and we'll rotate that lens into good position. And so going back to our question is, we line it up with the marks that we've made here on the cornea. And sometimes we'll find that instead of being perfectly lined up underneath them, they are parallel to our marks on the cornea. And that's okay because that's still 120 degrees. So there are the marks on the cornea, there are the marks on the IOL, and in a certain position they line up beautifully, but what if I have to shift the optic in order to line up the central diffractive zone with the pupil? And so we're going to use those Purkinje images, shift the IOL over, keeping the lens at that 120 degree meridian, but simply moving it in parallel. And that's going to allow us to get not only good centration of the lens and the diffractive rings in the pupil, but also allows to have a proper orientation of the toric power. And you can see that parallel nature of the toric marks on the eye well and the toric marks that we made on the cornea. Those are very nicely lined up. They're not fully overlapped, they're parallel, and that's very appropriate. Check out cataractcoach.com, our teaching website. You can submit your own video. We'd love to review it for you. And you can do it anonymously. And also sign up for a free daily email. We'll send you a great teaching video right to your inbox every single day. Thanks for watching.